Sound design. I'm bad at math. I used to say this and think this to myself all the time. I barely passed my college level physics class with a C. What I want to talk to you about today is how I turned that around, changed my attitude, and started figuring out how to use math as a practical tool for me to get answers in the field and during pre production design work and reduced my fear about the whole concept. One problem with this is just that the self-talk, right? You hear yourself saying, I'm bad at math. Subconsciously, you might be then thinking, I'm bad at math, therefore I am bad. So we want to get rid of that, but it also stops the conversation, right? So you may be talking to someone and they're saying, oh yes, you can use this little formula, or you can use this little piece of math, or you do this calculation, or you go to a workshop And what happens pretty often is someone says, okay, and then you use this formula and then your brain shuts down, right? So either to yourself or out loud, you say, oh, I'm bad at math. And it's like this excuse. And I get it because I used to do it all the time, but I want to talk about how we can get away from that. So one of the first things that I did to start changing my attitude about this was number one, just writing everything down. So even if someone is saying something that I don't understand, I'm writing down the formula, copying it down just verbatim so I can try and figure it out later. So you need a place where you store your knowledge, your personal knowledge base. So I use this document called Workflowy. It's just a little app and I'll put a link to it below this video. But basically I have just a section here called learning. I know where I need to go quickly to find something that I've written down. Maybe it's a seminar that I've taken. Maybe it was from this teacher, Stephen Pavlik. I took his RF course, which I really loved. And I remember, oh yeah, I had this question about how to calculate something having to do with cables. So then I'll go in there and it has a search function and it's really nice. It doesn't matter what you use. You just need some way to get back to that point where you either had an understanding or at least a piece of information that you wrote down. Okay, beyond that, the next step then I think is to start figuring out just how to practically get the answer. Something that I'll never forget is at the beginning of Merlin Van Veen's workshops, he says, this is adult education. And he goes on to explain that he doesn't care how you get the answer, You just need some way to get to the answer. And there are all these guidelines in audio, but if you understand them, then you understand how to use them. There are these rules, but if you understand the context around them, then you can break them and and things like that. So adult education, it's 100% your responsibility how you use this information. So what I like to do is take something that I have started to understand and make something with it and then prove to myself that it works. Here is the problem that we're going to work through today to talk about this. Imagine that you're working on a show like this and you want to take some distance measurements with your laser disto and then you go out to 100 feet depth and you point your laser up at these speakers and you can't see it at all. The sunlight is so bright and you're so far away and you forgot to put like any kind of target up here. It's a common problem that I run into And I have a whole list of workarounds to get that distance measurement and some other tools. One of those tools is by solving right triangles. So that's what I want to talk about today. Just a simple math problem that I think people who are good at math or just memorize formulas would just do by heart or just do on a calculator real quick. But I'm going to show you how I would start to work on something like this. So I'm going to close this and then the first thing I might do is just Google solve triangle and we'll get to actually I guess I should explain the context. So when I'm approaching a geometry problem and I'm definitely not an expert at geometry so I'm not teaching geometry here I'm just showing you some the little tiny tools that I know about how I try to use them. So I know that if I know any two sides of a right triangle, I can solve for the third. We all learn this in school. It's one of the first things, Pythagorean theorem. And so I start looking at this problem of how do I get, how do I get this distance measurement 
from other information that I might be able to get. So I start looking at this and I start wondering, maybe there's a right triangle here somewhere that I can solve and figure this out. Because if I know my A side and my B side, then maybe I can solve my C side. So now I think, okay, how do I figure this out? Maybe I'll just Google right triangle solver. I don't exactly remember the formula to figure this out. So if you Google solve right triangle, it's built into Google. And this happens a lot for me, calculations. And so we just throw some numbers in here real quick. Let's say that we know that A leg is seven and that B leg is 10. And then we immediately get a result. Great. But I'd like to talking about changing my relationship with this understanding, I might say, hey, I don't quite understand this and I don't know if I'll be able to use it again in the future. Can I use this in the field? So next, I might try to figure out how to build something with this. And for me, that means usually going to a tool like a spreadsheet. Spreadsheets are something to be afraid of. It's free in Google Drive. Sign up for a Google Drive account and then just create a new spreadsheet. Okay, so I'm gonna try and take what I just learned in this formula. I see here that C equals the square root of A squared plus B squared. So I'm gonna put that in. So if I know A and B, I can get C. Okay, and I had just tested this with seven and 10. So if I know A is seven, B is 10, then what is C? I just looked at this and it says square root of a squared plus B squared. Okay, so how do I type that in here? So a formula equals the square root of this number squared plus this number squared. Okay, and I didn't know all these, like this formula for square root and this formula of power, right? Raised to the power of two. I didn't know that, I had to Google that. So I just Googled Excel or Sheets square root and then I found it. I just Googled power and I found it, okay? So now I have my answer. This says 12.2 and I can reduce the, oops, can reduce the precision here a little bit, 12.21 and that's what we got over here, 12.2. Okay, great. So I know I typed the formula in correctly. So now let's go to the next step of the problem here which is Yes, this is all happy, but how do I actually get this value here? Because I can't just measure to the middle of the array here. It's hard to point my laser here, but I can get this value pretty easily. So let's clean this up a little bit. Okay, so if I have this value, then what's left? I need this distance here, so I need to add that and then I need to subtract this distance here, which is the height of the audience. Well, one of those is easy. I know the height of the audience is either going to be sitting head height or standing head height. And then this, we'll talk about how to get that in a second. So what I'll do is I'll take the work that I have so far, move it down here and just start expanding on it. So what do we say? Audience height, this is a easy one because it can only be typically two things. I could just measure it, but often it's either going to be, I, what I have memorized from just working on designs a lot is that it's often either 1.2 meters or 1.6 meters. Those are numbers easy for me to memorize. I don't remember what that is in feet and I'm working in feet here today just because that's what I started the design in. So how do I convert that? Well, I could just Google how to convert and then I have to remember that number, but Again, since we're talking about adult education here, you just need some way to get to that answer. So another one is if you just memorize the convert function here in Sheets, I'm sure it's the same in Excel, put in the number that you have. So let's say I'm gonna write this down here. So one trick here is to put your units in this column over here if you just wanna work quickly. And then just over here, I'll remember, hey, I remember that 1.6 is the height in meters. So how do I convert that? Convert meters to meters from feet. I hope I'm doing this correctly. And there we go. So I did that. And again, reducing the precision here and making it easier 
to look at. Okay, so that one's easy. I know that one, I don't have to measure it, so I could just always leave this here. So I'm already saving myself some time. So I could just open this calculator up in the future. How would I do that? So I call this something like solve right triangle distance, and then I bookmark it, and I put it in a folder in my bookmark so that I can open it up on my phone and get to it really quickly. The next question is this missing piece here. What I can tell is that it's an estimate of half of the array height, right? So I'll just type in the array height. Now, how do I measure the array height? Well, I can't get up there, but this is typically in my paperwork. So when I do the design and then I print out the paperwork and I'm taking it with me to the show or however it happens, I can usually just get this directly. So down here, it says array span 7.04 feet. So I say, great. 7.04 and I need half of that so I'll say half array height again equals to start a formula of this number divided by 2. So I have half of the array height, I have my audience height and so now from that I can figure out this number left over here. So what I need to do is take this blue value, subtract my audience height, add half of my array height. So now I can just type that out logically here. So A equals, oh, I don't know this distance here yet. So that's another variable that I need. So ground to array. And that's what I would measure here in the field. I can grab my little distance measure here and it says 17.44 feet. 17.44 feet. And I could fill these all out if I wanted to. So we start with that value, we subtract the audience height, and then we add the half of the array height, 15.71. Pretty cool. These are things that now I can do pretty quickly just with a calculator in the field, but when I was first starting out, definitely not. And so I need to a time to work with it slowly to just think through these things and make mistakes and have some way of verifying it. And I can verify it because one way to verify this would be to just draw a line now and I say, hey, what is that actual height? And so if I draw a line from here to here, then I can measure it. I'm expecting 15.71 and it says 12.3. Oh, because I didn't measure to the actual center of the array. So we get rid of this and fix this. So from about here to about here. Okay, 15.47, very close. So I have verified that I did this part of the calculation correctly. What's the next piece of information that I need? I need to know this distance that I can just measure directly. Either my front of house location is here and so I'm just pointing the laser there or I have some target that I'm pointing at or whatever. But that's, so that's the next step that I would take and I measure from there to this point and it is 23 feet. So then I would add another variable here and I would say distance to front of house or alignment position or whatever and that's 23 feet. So B equals 23 feet. And you can even insert images in here, so it might be helpful to grab this image and then copy it and put it into the cell here, something like that. And then I could even make it smaller. And now I can have a refer back, or if I need to remind myself how to get back there, I could grab this URL, I could put that here, all keeping track of my learning here. Okay, so now I know how to solve this right triangle and now I have a calculator to do it. And so when I get into the field, I can just pop this open and I can put in the variables. I might wanna remind myself, what are the variables that I need? These are things that I could preset, by the way, during my design work, but it's common that you might highlight these fields to make them easier to remember. So I want to remind myself, hey, I'm going to highlight these, this field and this field and this field yellow. So I remember that those 
are the ones that I need to fill out as soon as I open this up. It draws my eye to it. Okay, what's the next step with this? For me, the next step is then possibly in the future building this into a tool that I'm already using. So what I have done in Subaligner is that I have added the exact same calculator. And we can test it out by putting the same values in here. So I'll put this over here and I'll put in my array height, 7.04. I'll leave this empty for now. Talk about that in a minute. And my C value is the distance from the ground to the height of the array, ground to array, 17.44. And my this D value, distance to front of house, distance to front of 23. And my audience height is 5.25, 5.3 is pretty close. So the result that I get, 27.83, there we go. So I see these calculators verify each other. I could even go back to the Google calculator and verify it. So along the way, I'm just checking my work. And then in the future, I'm just only referring to this. So going back to our topic of adult education, just having some way to practically get to the answer in the field. Now I have an easier to use, even more fun way to get there. But if I need to remind myself what those calculations actually are, I can go back to this original spreadsheet and I just click on these fields and I can see how I did those and I have a paper trail here of how I figured this stuff out, right? Now this one field that I skipped over here is array depth. And that's because of course, if we are measuring this distance here, we are measuring to the geometric center of the array here but we're not measuring to this point inside the array. And so if we wanna to get to this point and we're measuring from here to the bottom of the array, then we also need to consider just this little bit of space, which is half of the array depth. And if you don't, and your paperwork should say the array depth, just like it will if I, let's see, if I select this guy, then I can see here array depth, 3.34 feet. So I would put that in. 3.34 and that gives me a slightly more accurate result and if I don't know this I could just look up the dimensions of one leopard loudspeaker and put that in and that wouldn't give me as accurate a result right because we have this whole curving banana thing going on here but it would be better than nothing and again this I should point out this is all an estimate so this seems like a lot of work to get an estimate. When you're in the field and you need to get some value, you need to get some distance measurement, this could be important to get. And so you don't mind filling out one, two, three, four, five fields here in a tool that you can get to really quickly and easily to get this value that otherwise you're not gonna be able to get because your laser is not working. The main tool that you use is not working. So then the next step in Subliner to use this value is just to click insert result and it puts it in the distance field for you here. There's also one for the subwoofer system as well. So if we look at the subs here, there's three of them, the distance from front of house. So let's say, I don't know, uh, it has a little calculator here for me. So either flown or ground stacked. So I would put in that distance measurement, audience height, and it estimates the distance for me. So I insert that and then I get my alignment recommendation here. So that's what I wanted to share with you today is just how I've started changing my attitude about math and just using tools that I know I need to get a result. And I'd love to hear what your feeling is about this. What are some ways that you have used to just get practical answers in the field and how have you changed your relationship with math formulas and calculations. All right, thank you. Sound design. Yeah.